Happy New Year, folks. A lot to get through, so hold on. The Southern Aurora Electrojet, producer of the Auroras Australis, was surged as Earth began yet another turn around the sun. On the list of bad ideas to start the new year, South Korea firing up that same reactor they could not get to work properly last time, had some moderate tremors in the northeast Indian Ocean near Sumatra, a five-pointer near Antarctica south of Australia, a near six-pointer in the Kuril Islands, but the real quake news is at the Canaries. This shows past 10 days quakes usually got between 3 and 10 on the list, but right after yesterday's news, the islands began rocking. We got dozens, near 100 quakes since yesterday's news video. Tropics Watch has two today. First, off the coast of Madagascar, set to run right over Reunion and Meridius Islands after turning south today. Cyclone Freda is now expected to move back west, but to have weakened significantly. We'll keep watch. Top story of the year is Comet C-2012S1 Ison. There's been unbelievable speculation about this comet, and the truth is it may outshine the moon in November, or it may be nothing. I have given you the JPL below, and just watch as I show you why the real show may begin in September, not November like everyone else is saying. First, I need to get us ahead to September 2013, so we can see what's near Ison and what's in the field of view from Earth. Now, at this date, Ison is currently just east in the sky of Mars and a little bit above Earth's orbital plane. Tilting and moving back so you can see, Earth looks at Ison this coming September and it will see Mars and Jupiter there as well. On September 1st, Stellarium tells us that the Moon will be up there too. Now Stellarium doesn't think much of Ison's brightness at this time, so we'll have to use this red marker to see it. Now just imagine that this thing is significant and it's shining bright blue. What kind of madness would you expect as it dances with the red planet for days? Weeks, actually. Because of the relative motion of the celestial objects, it's not for nearly seven weeks that the would-be blue and red kachinas begin to separate in the sky. Then the November show can start. Coming to the Bartol, missing data from yesterday, but today's little bit of reading showed that the cosmic ray density has continued to elevate. Got some missing data on Spaceship Earth on the left, too. Solar wind has calmed down significantly since that last wave struck. The induction is still there, but possibly fading. Just had our first sea flare in days as the blank sun has turned into Swiss cheese. Lots of sunspots out of nowhere. Let's take a look starting from the bottom left and coming up. These longitudinal sisters crested together and both appear to have bipolar magnetics, something to watch as it turns in more. Got a region in development here, also bipolar, but has shown mild decay the last 12 hours. Let's watch the high latitude region of yesterday's focus as it continues to develop. It is now the primary active region on the Earth facing solar disk and that large once isolated umbra below it are morphing quickly and facing Earth today. Big show might not even be here yet. Just cresting the limb is that active region I was talking about yesterday. It's still clearing its throat and getting ready to fully show himself. The sunspots are worth watching. Got a small dark equatorial coronal hole swinging in. It's 2013 and as I've told you for months, it's not over. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.18 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.